So I'm Matthew Barker, and I'm going to tell you about what I think is the most amazing place in the UK to conduct nuclear science. It's the Windscale Laboratory on the Sellafield site. It's a place where we were able to take in irradiated nuclear fuel, cut it up, and perform experiments on it. It's really great. So the Windscale facility has looked at a wide range of different nuclear fuel over the years. So it ranges from AGR fuel from the current fleet of reactors in the UK, uh, fuel from submarines, uh, fuel from test reactors like Helden in Norway, fuel from light water reactors, and fuel from historic reactors in the UK, so Magnox fuel, for example. So what I'm going to do in this presentation is take you through the life of Pi. That's post-irradiation examination. That's what we do on fuel and other components from reactors. I'm going to take you in steps through what we do, and then I'm going to tell you what the future is for PIE at NNL. So we do this at Windscale Lab. And this is a massive facility, a facility of international importance. It has 70 shielded workstations in the facility. It really is very large. That enables us to work on a wide variety of different fuels all at the same time. So the life of Pi begins when we bring the fuel or other material into the facility. And one of the great things about wind scale is its flexibility. So what you hear, see here is us bringing a flask into the facility. And we're able to deal with a wide range of different types of flasks. So this is the first stage. In comes a flask loaded with nuclear fuel. And we might take in a whole element of fuel, for example. This is an AGR element containing 36 fuel pins. Over the course of a year, we have a typical throughput of around about 800 pins, sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less. That is absolutely huge compared to other PIE facilities. It really is huge. So what do we do? Well, having taken in an element like that, we'll start to examine it. We might measure its diameter and its length to understand its performance in reactor and how it changes with irradiation. We then start to study the individual pins and look at the surfaces of individual pins. So you see here uh, a high magnification image on the surface of an AGR fuel pin. It's showing carbonaceous deposit. That happens to be one of the features of AGR fuel. It develops this carbonaceous deposit over time uh, from deposition from the coolant. Now, the problem with that is heat transfer impairment. So that impairs the transfer of heat from the fuel to the coolant, which isn't necessarily a good thing. So we want to understand what happens, how much heat transfer impairment there is. So we have various ways of assessing that deposit, understanding its morphology, understanding its thickness, and measuring all sorts of properties, like density, for example. So we look at it visually like that. We then take samples and perform SEM on it to understand its morphology in a great amount of detail, to understand its composition, and to enable people to calculate the heat transfer impairment of that deposit. The results you get from that sort of information are absolutely crucial to the safe reactor operations in the UK. The work we do at Windscale is absolutely crucial to that sort of thing. So the next stage, we take a piece of fuel and we cut it up. This is where it gets really exciting. So we can start to look at a transverse section of the fuel. That's what you see there. We can look in detail at the fuel understand the mechanisms that are happening inside the fuel during irradiation. So we can look at bubbles of fission gas release. We can look at precipitates of noble metals that form during irradiation. And then what we can do is cut it up even further. So you, what you see there is something we did uh, around about 15 years ago when we cut up the fuel even further and performed thermal conductivity measurements on the individual small fragments of the fuel. So the facility is undergoing a massive investment at the moment. It's having a 45 million pound refurbishment. And this is really intrusive. So we've got people going into cells, replacing cranes, pulling entire windows out of cells in order to replace and upgrade the windows. It really is a massive refurbishment. And so what are we going to do with this facility in the future, this newly refurbished facility? Well, the sort of things we'll be looking at 
Well, AGR reactors are going to remain really important to the work that we do, supporting the AGR fleet in the UK. Increasingly important is post-storage examination. So the UK is in a fortuitous position that we've got a wide range of different fuels that have had different storage conditions. So we're at the real forefront of understanding how those different storage conditions affect the behaviour of fuel over time. It's really important for understanding interim storage of fuel. And you'll hear more of that later from David Hambly. The other areas we'll be looking at are test reactor fuel and light water reactor fuel. So we'll be taking in fuel from a wide variety of sources and acting as a hub to send out bits of fuel to other facilities. So our own central lab and other international facilities, for example. The size of wind scale makes us ideal for that sort of role. So what are we doing in the future? Well, I mentioned disposal of fuel. Uh, this is a geological disposal facility, or what one might look like in the future. A side effect of PIE is that if we cut into the fuel, it increases the cost of disposal by almost an order of magnitude at times. So wouldn't it be great if we could perform this work non-destructively? We could perform more different tasks, we could get more information, and we could do it with less expense. So we've developed ways using gamma uh, scanning. So this is a gamma scanner. It scans along uh, an AGR fuel pin and measures the uh, emission of gamma rays. And what you can do is build up a plot, shown on the uh, lower right there, showing the intensity of gamma rays along a pin. You're looking at the top end of an AGR pin there. And from looking at that, we can identify features. So the green lines show the top of the pin, uh, interfaces between pellets in the pin. And that's great. That's what we've done over the past decade or so. But we want to take that further and do quantitative measurements so we don't have to cut into the pin destructively. So we're developing techniques to measure fuel stack length, clad length, burn up, and fission gas release. And we've had a great amount of success there in measuring fission gas release non-destructively. That's something that would previously have required us to puncture a pin and sample gas from inside the pin. We're also in collaboration with Oak Ridge National Laboratory to understand how we can use gamma scanning to measure the isotopic content of fuel. And this is a great deal of applications. For example, for safeguarding, if we form a database of this information, we can take unknown bits of fuel and determine actually what it is. It's also got even more application for disposal of fuel. So at the moment, when we dispose of fuel, we don't take account of its burn-up in terms of criticality. So this allows us to measure its burn-up, which means it has a lower possible criticality consideration, and then dispose of the more fuel more cheaply. The other area we've gained great expertise on from looking at carbonaceous deposit is measuring difficult materials. This is a really challenging material to measure. It's friable, it's thin, it's just almost impossible to measure at times. So we've developed techniques to do that, and we're even going further and using optical techniques, so confocal surface measurement, in order to measure the thickness and surface, uh, surface properties of that deposit. So that's great, we can apply that to AGR fuel, but also we can apply the expertise in other areas, so like water reactor fuel, for example, to examine crud on the surface of fuel, or oxidation. Now, I've talked so far mostly about fuel. I wanted to mention also the other work we do on irradiated material, in particular graphite. So what you see here is a really colourful image of us performing electronic speckle pattern interferometry on a beam of graphite. It allows us to measure the Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. So we have a large program developing techniques for measurement on active graphite machined from reactors. And we can carry that on and use that sort of expertise to apply to other materials, including fuel. Finally, I wanted to highlight what I think is one of the really important areas of PIE in the future, and that's understanding off-normal conditions. So one of the bounding limits on fuel in a reactor can be its performance under off-normal conditions. And particular parameters that are useful to know there are the thermal conductivity and the thermal diffusivity. And we're developing techniques to be measuring the thermal conductivity and diffusivity of fuel in the future. So just to summarise and round off what we're actually going to be doing in the future. Well, the source of the material is actually going to be very similar. It's AGR stations, test reactors, light water reactors, submarines. 
But the important distinction, the important difference, is the techniques that we'll be applying. So we'll be trying to measure parameters non-destructively instead of destructively, and performing more analysis, including thermal conductivity. So that is the life of Pi. Thanks very much.